Now, the author and broadcaster, Giles Brandreth, first met the Queen in 1968. He got to know her through his friendship with the Duke of Edinburgh. Well, we can talk to Giles now. Um, good morning, Giles. Um, a very, very sad day. A day many expected to come, but I think just anecdotally getting so many emotional reactions that so many people didn't quite expect. Strange, isn't it? It's very moving to be here outside Buckingham Palace. Windsor and Balmoral, I think, were Queen's favourite homes, but this Buckingham Palace here in London is the headquarters of the family firm. And the Queen was the head of that firm for 70 years, seven months and three days, in the longest reign in our history. Uh, but more than that, I, I think people from across the world are here. If you walk in front of the palace, you meet British people, the people, international people, and so many broadcasters. This is world news that the Queen has represented the United Kingdom to the world impeccably for as long as almost all of us have been alive. It is, she, she was extraordinary. And it wasn't simply because she was the Queen. I think it was the nature of her personality. Uh, people who I've been speaking to by the palace, the one word that comes most frequently to their mouths is respect. People just had so much respect for her, for the dignity with which she carried out her duties right to the end. Extraordinary. Age 96, uh, meeting her 15th uh, British Prime Minister. When you remember that her first Prime Minister was Winston Churchill, who was born in 1874. And her most recent Prime Minister, Liz Truss, another Elizabeth, born in 1975, uh, a span of a hundred years. Extraordinary. Charles, when you uh, look, and I'm sure you've heard, as uh, many people have done now, tributes from world leaders and from prime ministers who say that wisdom she brought to the table in a very subtle, un understated way in their meetings when she'd chat, sat alongside an ability to beam a smile at people, no matter who they were, and make them feel special. It, it's, it was an extraordinary balance of skills and character that she had. That smile was electric. Uh, as the Queen grew older, she was conscious that her face sometimes looked a little bit grumpy unless she was smiling. So she did flash that smile, but it was unbelievable. It really could light up a room. Her, her smile was incredible. You, you saw it in that picture taken only on Tuesday of her, uh, looking rather impish, looking up dilly an elderly, a frail person, and yet with a twinkle in her eye, uh, she had a wry sense of humour. I think the only thing that wasn't on public display as much as it might have been over the years was her great sense of humour. Never malicious, um, but it was worldly wise. And she did indeed. She, she, she delivered one-to-one -one with all the world leaders that she met as uh, the ambassador for the United Kingdom, as the head of the Commonwealth, somebody who who knew everybody, who literally had met every world leader, every United States president, from President Truman onwards, who literally had known everybody and had experienced everybody. She never expressed particular admiration for people, even if you tried to test her, though I think she had a particular respect for Nelson Mandela, because, as she said, he endured what he did in prison and emerged without rancor. She was a person who had no rancor. She was gracious, she was good, she was an example to us all. She was the best of us, and I think therefore brought out the best of us, as we can see today. Guys, I'm interested in, in the, the way that different generations uh, are thinking about the Queen, because there'll be veterans of the Second World War, people from that generation, who have one version of how they knew her and their respect for her, and then there's children now who, who saw her with Paddington Bear very, very recently. Uh, there are so many places and um, moments in time where she has become clearer to a different generation. 